Okay, here we go. Okay, good evening. I'd like to call the Lancaster Central School District Board of Education meeting to order. Uh, let's see. In the unlikely event of an emergency, if we have to evacuate the boardroom, please note the location of the exits. At this time, I ask you to silence your cell phones and rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain standing for a moment of silence for individual reflection. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight we remain standing for uh, Malia Lawrence, uh, a student in the district who passed away on August 18, 2017. Thank you, everyone. So 4.0 presentations, 4.1, we're gonna start with the Elementary Jump Start Summer Program. Uh, Mrs. Colleen Schaefer. Good evening, board, members of the community. Very quickly, uh, my name's Andy Kouf. I just want to provide a quick little introduction on behalf of myself and Karen Marchioli, who couldn't be here this evening. Uh, we have three, well, four individuals, but three here who have a couple things in common. Uh, the first one is that Colleen Schaefer at the elementary level, Allison Smirk at the middle school, and Mike Candela at the high school uh, were not in these positions last year, which we've had a good amount of continuity over the course of several years. To, to meet the challenge and exceed the challenge, and I'm not gonna get into it because it's gonna speak for themselves, but they did a, a fantastic, fantastic job. Colleen, I know in talking to Karen, uh, very fortunate to be able to have the, um, the summer school program in the K-6 level. Yesterday I was talking to a, a parent at Westwood Park who participated, not knowing that I was a district employee, and they raved about the program. Their young uh, grandson is going into um, kindergarten at one of our elementary schools and they couldn't be happier with the progress that uh, he made in the short time the program was available to him. Allison Smirka and her team at the, uh, and partly I'm doing this because I know that they won't, they're going to be modest and humble and deflect. The vision of the middle school summer program was very simple, get students enjoying and loving school again. And Allison, and you'll see in a few short moments, some of the things that they did, it's more of a summer camp. They were able to um, get the kids up and moving. The pictures are gonna speak for themselves because these are students who have maybe not had the most success in school. They were loving it. They were smiling, enjoying it, and I don't wanna steal any of her thunder, but it was, it was fantastic. Mike Candela, who you'll meet in a few moments here, is fairly new to the district, but has hit the ground running. His attention to detail for the summer school program, absolutely fantastic. Um, the students there, I must say, he, the, the strength that, that Mike possesses, or Mike's possessed, is the, the ability to meet students where they are, but also hold them to the highest of expectations. And the three of them, along with Melissa Martin, who's joined us from Iroquois for uh, her internship hours this past summer, they did a fantastic job. So I'm gonna sit down now and turn it over to them, but I, I, I would have been remiss if I didn't certainly introduce them and the fantastic job that they did. Thank you again to the board because this is a unique opportunity that we have in Lancaster and they have taken full advantage of it as have our students, so thank you. Yes, hi, like Andy said, I'm Colleen Schaefer. I'm the principal of the elementary program. And on behalf of all the principals this summer, we really sincerely wanna thank the Board of Education Dr. Valley, thank you for giving us this opportunity because we, provide, we provided a great service for the students of our Lancaster School District. I also do have to go back to Andy and thank him and Karen Marchioli for letting us be your administrators this summer and giving us the support. Um, Michelle Ziegler, thank you for helping us get our class list up and going on our e-school. We would um, be in big trouble without you, so thank you very much. And of course, then the district buildings, the principals at the district buildings, the custodians, the cleaners for all their behind the scenes support. We appreciate that. So without further ado, um, Melissa's gonna click for me. 
I'm going to talk about the elementary summer school program. There we go. Okay, and you can, this is our program right here. In the beginning of spring, we had over 100 referrals. We had referrals from all of the elementary schools. We had referrals from our UPK program, from the teachers and from the administrators. We were able to enroll 87 students from pre-K all the way up through grade six. We had 11 teachers, so the class sizes were small. We had about eight students per class. And we were able to provide them small group instruction. Come on in. If you take a look at this screen right here, we have increased, we have steadily increased our enrollment from 2012 when I was an intern up until 2017. So we have 87 students from going back from 75. If you take a look at the program, so what Andy said was true, our kindergarten program was our biggest class. We had 21 students and that was because we really wanted to support our UPK program and really um, provide those students with the kindergarten readiness that they needed. And then as you can see, we had full class list all the way up till sixth grade. Our attendance rate for, for grades K through six um, was less than 90%, but I have to tell you that's because we allowed students who we knew were going to be on summer school vaca or summer vacation. They asked us, they said, listen, we're going on summer vacation, but we really need this program. So we allowed those students to come to summer school. And I think that that was a really good idea. Now, Melissa is going to talk to us about our project-based learning because that is what our program was made of. Our emphasis was literacy, and she's going to talk to you about the project-based. Sure. Um, project-based learning is an opportunity for kids to study a topic or a problem in an in-depth way across many curricular areas. And they work in small groups to study and research about one topic in depth. Um, our program decided to focus on communities this summer. So the K-6 decided that they were going to do weather and communities and study different um, extreme weather. And our K-3 program studied communities like um, urban, suburban, rural, people in the community, places in the community. Um, um, to support the project-based learning, both um, programs had speakers and field trips to come in. The four through six had the National Weather Service come in to talk to the students about uh, weather and meteorology. And then we went to News Channel 2 and met Patrick Hammer, and um, he told us about meteorology, and we got to see the 1130 broadcast of the news, which the kids were ecstatic about. <laughs> <laughs> He was, he, was, he was fabulous with the kids. I was, he was great. I know. <laughs> Timothy wanted to go. He couldn't. <laughs> um, the K-3 students um, did a community walk. They walked through the village of Lancaster and went to the library, the pet shop, the toy store, and the chocolate shop. And then they had the Zoomobile and the fire company come and do presentations in the program. Um, on the last, do you want to fix me? Maybe that's our, that's our community walk, and the different places we went. On the last day of the um, summer school program, the kids presented their learning. The four through six kids all made trifolds, focusing on different weather, um, and presented it to their families. And the K three did different presentations according to their grade and age appropriateness. Some kids um, compared themselves to like farmers, others created maps of the community after the community walk, making a, a representation of things that they had seen and learned. Um, as teachers and families that we spoke to, everyone was very impressed with the things that the kids produced in the short four weeks that we had them. Hello, I'm Allison Smirka and I ran the middle school program this year. Um, our program was four weeks long um, we had seven teachers and one library media specialist. 
we had 26 students, and out of those 26 students, 19 were special education students, and um, only four students were mandatory who had to be there because they failed three or more classes. In addition to the regular LMS summer program, there was the math enrichment program, and there were 84 students registered for that with one teacher. And it was um, a little different than our program set up, but they had two different sessions per day for four weeks, and each week a new session began. So Mrs. Rita Gregory taught this um, for eight different sessions throughout the four-week program. And that was just for the incoming seventh grade students who'd be taking the advanced math course this coming school year. The students in the regular LMS summer program participated in all four of their core classes, in addition to Lancaster Island, which is an online um, virtual world. They also participated in PE, which was a great addition to the program um, to get their energy out throughout the day. And then we also incorporated something new this year called Genius Hour, which I'll explain in just a moment. Similar to what Colleen said, we decided to do something new this year, project-based learning or inquiry-based learning. And at first, the teachers and I were very nervous. We really weren't sure what to expect. We'd never tried anything like this before. And after the first day, it was unbelievable to see how well it worked. The students were engaged. They were so excited. Um, I can't tell you how many times the students said how fun the program was and how it wasn't a traditional sit-in-a-seat sort of classroom program. And the teachers liked it so much that um, since they did it on a smaller scale and were able to see how successful it was, they actually want to try it this school year in their own classroom. So we're very excited to see how that goes this school year. Um, a lot of the students, here were some of the comments. Um, at the end of the program, I gave the students a survey asking them kind of, you know, what did you think about the projects? Because each class, the students had a different project to do. So you can see that they thought it was fun. They really enjoyed getting to choose a topic of their choice. Um, and they liked the challenge of it as well. Here are just a few pictures of the students in action. Um, the students and staff had PE um, that they participated against and have some competitions. And one of the most innovative projects that the students created throughout the program was this young man, Nick, who decided to research Spartans for social studies. So he created a clay model of a Spartan, including all the, the gear and everything like that. So it was a really neat project. And then the new class we incorporated this year was called Genius Hour. And if you're not familiar with it, it's, it's kind of like a maker space, if you know what that is. But basically, the students had one hour per week where they could explore anything that they wanted to that was in addition to the, the projects that they worked on in class. So it was something totally random, anything at all that interested them. Um, these young men down here were creating a battery-powered car. Um, this young man decided to create a recipe book on smoothies and made enough smoothies for all the kids and teachers and uh, some visitors to, to test out as well. And then these girls, it was so cute. Mrs. Hobie was their social studies teacher, and she's pregnant. So they made her a surprise welcome baby banner for the baby's room. So they just came up with some really neat ideas all on their own with the help of Mrs. Hanners, who was the library media specialist. We also had the opportunity to take some field trips. We went to the Naval Park. Uh, Mr. Reno led a walk around Lancaster to learn about the history of Lancaster. And then we had young engineers come in and teach the students how to make spinning tops. And then they had competitions as to uh, which top would spin the longest and the fastest. And then in addition to the content, these are some of the things the students said that they learned. They're, they learned how to make new friends, um, how to work hard and try their best, and the incoming seventh graders learned their way around the school, which is obviously helpful for this coming school year to reduce their stress a bit. And here are some other skills over there, too, that they said they learned throughout the program. So you can see the inquiry-based model, the project-based model, isn't just where the students sit down and do projects and learn content. They learn other skills as well that they'll use throughout their life and throughout their academic career. So we're very appreciative of the opportunity to, to run this program, and a special thanks to the middle school building for having us, all the staff and the custodian staff who helped us um, constantly throughout the program. So we thank them very much. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Mike Candela. I ran the high school summer school program this summer. Um, I, I first would like to just start with our staff. Our staff did a phenomenal job of meeting all the needs of our students that were there. Uh, we were comprised of 10 staff members in total. Uh, we did have one teacher, one teacher's aide. We did have a library media specialist. Uh, and then we had our nurse on staff, too. So we were a full, functioning, uh, realistic, and, and fully comprehensive program that we were able to offer this summer. Uh, the overview, realistically, uh, the high school program was really built on credit recovery. Uh, we had students that were there because for whatever reason, the school year didn't work for them, whether that was behaviorally, academically, uh, and they just needed a second chance, a second opportunity to be successful. So that was our first goal. And our second goal was to be able to provide remediation 
for examinations throughout that time. We had students that were coming that were unsuccessful in June, and they came to us, and we tried to provide them with review classes in every content area to prep for those examinations. Uh, as I indicated, uh, we, had, we had a combination of, of, a, of a regular and special program condensed and combined together. Uh, many of our staff members were also certified in special education, so our students, depending on their needs, depending on what they uh, required for graduation, depending on the courses they were unsuccessful in, uh, we brought them in and they were able to take upwards to three courses uh, while they were here with us. Students in general uh, were, were on average in about two two courses, uh, but we had students who were just there for one course and the students all the way up there for three courses. Um, we were six weeks long. In total, we were, over to, we were able to offer almost every academic uh, core class that traditional high school offers, uh, everything in English, everything in social studies, science, and math. Uh, those were our course offerings. I won't labor you guys in, in looking at that, but the, the quantity of what we were able to offer with our 10 staff uh, members was substantial. Our total enrollment, uh, we had 120 students there, 123 students there for classes. And when I talked about the importance of a lot of our staff members having that uh, dual certification for special education, because over and just about half of our students were there classified. Um, we also had about 42 students that came in, it was not about, we actually had 40 students that came in uh, weekly for review classes. So our program, six weeks long, we serviced about 170 students each week um, for those six weeks. Our course enrollment by subject, there was a, a high quantity of math that we had enrolled this, this, uh, this summer school program. Um, that was um, essentially uh, a product of course failures from, this, uh, from, from the, uh, June, June, at the end of the June program. Um, so ultimately that was the, how, what our enrollment looked like. For grade levels, uh, we had a high ninth grade enrollment, which is very important. Obviously, students that uh, start off ninth grade, they're unsuccessful, sometimes uh, end up turning into non-completers, end up having, getting in trouble with credits. So close to 45% of our population was enrolled in our ninth grade courses. Um, our final numbers, which uh, obviously the, the top one's the most important, but I'll get to that last. We, we, uh, during our June examination, we administered 146 examinations that scored, proctored, um, scanned, uh, you know, uh, everything that goes into a June region schedule condensed into three days. Uh, we had an under 186 courses that were awarded credit. And I think the thing that's substantial about this number in particular is the fact that uh, I attended a SST meeting at the high school right at the end of June. And that uh, SST meeting with the counselors and the administrators, they handed me a list and they said, Mike, here's about 330 courses that students did not retrieve credit in. We were able to get just over half of those back in August. It's a substantial number. As I was pulling the data, I really wanted to make sure to emphasize that. Uh, we also did have 13 students participate in an internship program. We had two different teachers that piloted different types of initiatives this year. Uh, we had two hybrid courses. One of those hybrid courses where students met online, but also met in the classroom with CEIP, which they were able to participate in their internship program, and also English in the regular ed program was online. And then finally, the reason we're here and the reason we offer the program is because our four graduates. And I would like to extend my congratulations to three out of the four that are here, uh, Kenny, Kirsten, and Marina in the back. Thank you for coming. Thank you for finishing out your program. We enjoyed having you guys. We'll bring up the, the Board of Ed President, Mr. Patrick Uteg. And we'll, Mr. Candela, if you want to come over as well, come on over. I'll let you know. Ready, sir? All right. Kirsten, you can come up. This is Kirsten DiPerno. Congratulations. If anybody wants a picture, feel free to either now or at the end, too. Marina, you can come up next. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Marina, Z Marina Zosh. We did have Jalen here, but I think he got a little nervous, so unfortunately he won't be with us. 
But then I do want to introduce Kenny Ham, uh, Kenny Fam, that just came in. Sorry about that, bud. Thank you. <laughs> well, from from that standpoint, once again, thank you to Colleen, Allison, Melissa, Mike. Fantastic job again. I will say, at this point, if you do want any pictures. Feel free to come up. Otherwise, you are certainly free to go. Um, enjoy maybe a little celebration this evening. So congratulations. So before we continue on, I would like to uh, repeat Dr. Kufel's thanks to, uh, first of all, to the, the administrators that are here to uh, present uh, the occurrences and the progress over the summertime. We know that it's tough to come to, to school as a student. It's very tough to come as a teacher as well in the summertime. Um, and by the pictures, it clearly uh, shows that you've engaged these students, um, you know, brought them back around to enjoying school. Uh, you know, but it's, it makes for a long year uh, for them and for you. And I saw the pictures of the staff that cooperated. You know, many people do this multiple summers, almost every summer, and that's um, it's a very difficult thing for a teacher to do. But the most difficult thing, no matter what the context or, or what the circumstance that they come to summer school with, um, it's difficult to engage students and engage them in effect, uh, effectively. And that's clearly what's done here. So I thank you for your time and your efforts, and I wish you well on the school year, and the same thing to all the teachers and nurses and aides and um, everyone who participated in this very worthwhile program. So thank you again. Yeah. And you can go home now too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. We have to take care. So 5.0 correspondence. We received an email from Mr. Robert uh, Potosniak dated August 13, 2017. 6.0 approval of well mr potosniak's email had to do with the new newly released uh, veterans tax exemption from new york state uh, again the governor is given school districts uh, permission to grant uh, uh, veterans tax exemptions for another category of veterans uh, and it's not something that's on our agenda just yet because we don't have all the information requisite to making a proper decision as to how it would affect uh, Lancaster taxpayers. So once we have that information, um, we'll have it as an action item. We'll have uh, discussion and questions amongst members of the board. Did someone get back to him? Anyone? Yes. Dr. Valley, you spoke to? Uh, Ms. Phillips. Yep. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry, my mic wasn't on. The student parking situation because of the construction and the lottery issue. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get back to anyone earlier, but it is back to school time and I'm back to school. So um, are we, what, what it, can someone update me on like what's going on with that situation? I realize there's construction, we're short spots and it's a lottery and that kind of thing, but is there a, a system in place of um, those with early dismissals go first or seniors go first or is there some kind of priority or is it just luck of the draw? How, how does this work? Here. I think first it's important to mention, sorry? I think at first it's important to mention that uh, this school district for many years and this board and this community has been proud of the fact that uh, we offer 100% busing. Uh, many school districts do not offer 100% busing. I know uh, 
the school district I attended and then and uh, even today, uh, within two miles, those students have to walk. So there's a radius and you walk. Uh, this board and this community has been a very uh, proud of the fact that we offer 100% busing. No matter where you live, you can get a uh, bus to school. Having said that, um, the, uh, we've been forecasting this for a while, that uh, in 1954 when that high school was built, there was probably one car per family. And now that isn't the case anymore. There's two and three and four and whatever else. So consequently, uh, the last two decades, um, it's always contentious because there aren't enough uh, parking spaces to meet all the students' demands which is why the Board of Education in this community approved, well, one of the reasons this Board of Education and community approved a 2015 capital project. Uh, that bus garage is being built as we speak, and when it's built and finished in Walden, uh, that will provide uh, over 200 more parking spaces for students. Uh, but until that happens, there's a crunch, there's always a shortage of uh, parking spaces. And then finally, um, to answer your question directly, it has always been a lottery. Um, People have different reasons and think that their more, reasons are more important than everyone else's, but the reality is, is that it's not a, a, a right, it's a privilege. Everyone enters into a lottery, and uh, those people who are drawn from the lottery get the first choice, or you know, get a parking space, and if they uh, do not behave appropriately or whatever, they can lose that privilege, and they do along the way. Um, Seniors first, yes, it's always seniors first. And then it, it doesn't matter if you have an early Christmas one or not. The busing that you mentioned that we, have, we are very fortunate to have doesn't help when you have no seniors. So that doesn't make that doesn't play into it. So it's just one mass lottery. One mass lottery to make it fair for everyone. There are only so many spots. And I'm talking like the street. Can we do something where they don't get those, those cars on the street? Or is that a problem with buses? Or is there like in the back? Or you know, is there something we're not looking at that we can temporarily do because of the construction? We have looked at ev absolutely everything. We will continue to look at things. Uh, like I've talked to uh, numerous people today on this topic. I've told them the same thing I'm telling you, which is uh, the big thing will be when uh, people and students and faculty and staff come back. We might have a situation where two faculty members are now car carpooling and we have an extra spot. Great. Uh, we may have situations that arise, but um, as far as the, we have exhausted every single opportunity right now to uh, give out the parking spaces. So there are not 20, there are no, there are not 29 spots that exist that we are able to find. So uh, to answer your question directly on the, uh, t that's the town, that was the town making the decision to place those things. We don't have any authority over the streets or the signage on those streets. Uh, I was here for that one too. That was about 12 years ago. And that was because students were going on that property and the, and the residents of those uh, streets and Paula, et cetera, um, went to the town and requested that those signs be placed there because students weren't behaving appropriately or they were littering or those kind of things. So I think that they burnt that bridge 12 years ago for uh, the, uh, the students that exist right now. Uh, but that is not in our authority or my authority as superintendent to change the signage or to uh, go in that direction. I'm sure that would be met with, with uh, some uh, resistance from those uh, homeowners and taxpayers. Can you just turn your mic on? I said I knew it had been a long going issue. I just didn't understand the protocol of who gets a spot. I didn't know, you know, I, I figured it was seniors first, but I thought it was, you know, those who had jobs or internships or half a day, you know, early dismissals. I thought there was other like criteria, I, or maybe there should be, but I don't know. That's just me. I, I just would hate for a child to like, not be able to go to a work because they can't get a parking spot. I mean, that kind of, that's not, what do they do then? Like take a study hall? Like do their, what do we do with them the rest of the day? 
You have a half, you have an early dismissal, but you don't have a parking spot. What do you do? <laughs> I mean, that's there, the call I got. There I are, have early there dismissal, and I don't have a parking spot. My parents work. What do I do? Those just look Uber like. Uber was my suggestion. I don't know. I don't know what to tell this ch child. Like, I seriously, that's why I'm here. I know another issue was the sports, sports equipment. I want to turn on your mic. So what about, you know, kids that might have sports equipment? Like my daughter plays plays hockey, right, for school. That's a lot of equipment that there is nowhere to keep it. So as a parent, I have to come up there for that purpose. So kids that have jobs or internships or play sports that require all these things uh, would make sense to me that that would be something that would fall into the criteria of getting a space above a child who, you know, has a full day of school and then can drive home. So, and maybe that's something that needs to be changed in the future. Well, jobs and internships, there's a lot of kids, even juniors that leave early. So are all the spaces now that are taken, are those all seniors? All of them, all of them? What about parking on Fortin Drive? That's what I, that's what I meant by parking. It always was, it always was when I was in school, which was a, a long so time ago. That's what I meant by the bus situation, because I think that, isn't that, wasn't that a problem years ago with the, off again. Wasn't that a problem years ago where they did allow them to park on Fortin, but then the buses? Just one side. Yeah, and those are, I mean, again, again, let's go back to this is a privilege for students and not a right. Um, first of all, uh, the, the Department of Transportation handles all of the street parking, so those avenues really be, have to be taken up with the town um, or other bodies other than the school board. With respect to clarifying and setting up a system uh, whereby students with special circumstances um, you know, may receive uh, preferential uh, placement on the list. Other than them being a senior, I, I wouldn't agree with any special categorization as all, at all because the ones that we mentioned, sports. Okay, sports are a privilege and a choice that a student makes as well. Working is also a choice that a student makes and if he chooses or she chooses to build sports or work into their day, they have to make arrangements for that transportation. So let me, let me give you a possible scenario. So say we had uh, a special designation for either of those two categories. So if my son, who lucky, luckily doesn't fall into this category anymore, he was lucky enough to get a spot last year, um, but his girlfriend did not, and I got an earful about that, of course, from him. Um, but say, say her parents simply want her to go to school, she saved up a long time for her car, she loves her car, but she comes home and she relaxes after school and then she perhaps helps her mother with dinner or she spends family time. That's just as good a reason and just as good a justification for wanting a, a parking spot as are the others. So, and, and it's not for us as a school board or as a district to designate what's a good idea and what's a good reason and what is not because basically what that comes down to is parenting decisions and student choices. And we should not go out of our way to accommodate privileges temporarily or permanently, yes. And that's why we built it into the construction plans to open up those spaces. And hopefully in the future, we won't have these issues. And I got a call as well from a friend of mine whose son didn't have a spot. And he owns a business and his son works for him. And I you know, try, I'd listened to him and I explained to him, I said, you know, if there's 30 kids on that list, I could have 30 conversations with parents who would come up with 30 good reasons. And I would judge each of them equally according to their, their wanting for a, uh, for, a, for a spot. But it, it basically comes down to Lancaster, yet again, is very objective and um, very fair in terms of who we allot privileges to. You know, I go back to, again, um, graduation tickets last year. Everybody wanted tickets. I wanted more tickets. I needed more tickets, but I couldn't get them. And it, it had to be a fair distribution, um, a lottery system, or something that treats every student fairly. So. I mean, this parking issue um, is, is an issue this year. Hopefully it won't be as much of an issue or, or an issue at all next year. Um, but again, uh, you know, if, if it's the certain feeling of people on the board to reevaluate that, it would, be, it would have to be in the future for next year. And hopefully we won't even have to, um, to address this again. Other thoughts, Mrs. Metz? Did you hear something from someone? Um, I did get a phone call today, too, from somebody who asked about it, yeah. And I said that, I, that I'm sure that we would be talking about it. It was an internship, early dismissal. Uh, 
yeah, those are, I mean, that's time well spent. Internships working, uh, but again, those do fall under categories of, of choices. Mr. Sage or Mr. Gallagher? Mr. Jackson? I, I, I didn't realize that. So one of the stories, I mean, a child working, a child taking an internship, and a child going home to watch soap operas. I didn't say they were admirable, but who are we to judge what is a productive use of time? I don't think that's the case, though. I think it's just, do you necessarily need a space? If, I think maybe there are some precedents there. Like, you know, if you do have an internship and it's continued schooling or a job, et cetera, you don't find that that kind of trumps just staying till the end of the day, someone who really needs no, I don't. that space to leave early? No, I don't, but because that's... That's a parent's. <laughs> Again, I mean, you're, you're getting, but you're getting into specific scenarios that aren't aren't really prevalent here, um, or may not be prevalent. And again, this is a moot point only because the decisions have been made. It was random. There were people who were unlucky and not getting a spot. And if this is to be an issue in the future, if you'd like to propose certain stipulations, go ahead and do that. And you'd have to persuade members of the board to agree with you, and then we would put it to a resolution and see if that passes. But um, I'm just stating my feelings, and I'm, again, one of seven. So I think, it, you know, at this point, it's, it's an issue that's not, uh, that we've discussed, what the decisions have been made. Any other thoughts? Um, how, how many spots are we down? We're down because of construction right now, right? Uh, I, we're down. We're not well, no. We're not down 30 spots. 29. 29 students are out. That's not because of construction, no. Um, this is... Uh, you know, a combination of more students requesting them, more and more students having cars, and the same amount of spots minus a few at via construction. And the construction that we're talking about is the construction of the new Java gym. And if you go around that, that's 100% safety reasons. We yeah. cannot move that fencing or whatever for fear that a crane or something could fall on students. It just it cannot be moved. Okay. So some of it's just driven by the population of students that are now driving and, and seniors. Um, some of it is temporary, right? That part's going to go away within the school year. And, yeah, and, and I and I understand that. I, well, but where? There's no. You have to walk. So where? so may, many streets. Where so I here's the where? thing. We we can't. I, I we're we're not going to solve that right now. I, we can't rule by exception either, right? I can find 15 reasons why I think something's more important than the other two. So I, I don't know that we're going to solve it right now. It warrants a discussion. We need to probably have it, but I I, I don't think we're going to solve that right now. I can come up with personal reasons why we could do one thing or the other, um, but <laughs> I don't think we're going to solve that right now. No, I didn't expect to solve it. I'm just saying, I think it's worth a discussion of what we do in the future to, and obviously, we can start school and complete. Okay, did anyone I, else I receive? Another, sorry, one other, one other thought. Is there any chance that these kids can park on the lawn? We do it for events. We do it for all sorts of sports. Sports. There's nothing right at that curb, that little stretch. Is there a reason why? You'd be talking about opening up 30 spaces. We'd have to have 30 children parking on the lawn. Just, just from the entrance? It's not realistic when we talk about um, snow, snow removal, the plows that go by there. That, that it would just never work. I mean, the plow would go by there, it would it could, it could potentially hit cars, um, it could blockade them in. We don't have snow removal in between the cars or anything like that. Additionally, um, you know, we have October storms and November storms and those kind of things. And we have done everything we possibly can to try to exclude people from parking on the lawns because it costs the school district thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars when cars go on the lawn um, during you know, fall and spring, and then the divots in the lawn, and then they have to be repaired by our buildings and grounds, which you know is, you know, lightly manned. But it happens at every event. Another thought, just brainstorming. Is there a situation where the church would be willing to give us 29 spots during the day? 
that's something that we could look into. All they'd have to do is cross the street. It's spots they're not really u utilizing during the week. Is that something we could look into to see if they'd be willing to? I'd say that that would be a viable option for those in 29 individuals to go and talk to the church. But the school district uh, should not be, you know, for insurance reasons and other things. So they um, wouldn't be liable, but maybe it's a place to park. I mean, it's worth a shot. I mean, if they're if they're willing to let the kids park there during the week when they have an early dismissal, it could be an option. And they they can maybe go and approach them can rally that up individually, and say, I'll be right? For that's, right. That's Obviously, this, yeah. right. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Addition, additionally, uh, people in the community on uh, whatever could uh, allow students to park in their driveways and they could walk to school. I mean, there are things that they can do at this point to solicit help and whatever. But I don't think the school district, um, because we've already tried with your first suggestion, which was a good one, but we've already tried and I don't think that's going to happen. And the second one, I don't think it's a, a school district uh, role to go and canvas the community on who's interested in having their right. students yeah. use their driveway. Do. It's they just something do nearby that Certainly. they could do. Certainly they can do those <laughs> things and choose those. Who owns that land across from the high school across Morton Drive? The triangle? No. The field? Right across from the high school. If you look out the front door. The field. A developer. Yeah. I don't know the one. A developer? Up. Yeah, I don't know which not one. Ours. It's not ours, but no. We, but we do own that house. Do we own that house? We do not own that house. No. Um, I've always wanted to buy it, but uh, <laughs> that well, is... They were going to sell it at one point. I don't think they, so. They had Did it for sale. Okay, anyone else receive any other correspondence? Okay, 6.0, we'll move on to approval of minutes. 6.1, could I have a motion to accept the regular session minutes from August 7th, 2017? So moved. Second, any second? Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. Items from, uh, 7.0 items from staff organizations. Anyone from the Lancaster Administri Administrative and Supervisory Association? Okay, thank you. Anyone from the Lancaster Central Teachers Association? Agree. Thank you, Mr. Kirsch. Anyone from the Lancaster Association of Service Personnel? And anyone from the Lancaster Association of Substitute Teachers? Okay, thank you. 8.0 board reports. Does anyone on the board have anything they'd like to report on? Thank you. Oh, sorry. Um, just a couple things. Uh, if you haven't seen the Carnival Kids lately, you need to. Uh, I haven't seen them in a while, and I was able to go to the Sacred Heart Picnic this past weekend. They're awesome. I could sit there for days and watch them. They're amazing. Um, so congrats to them and their music program. Just phenomenal. Um, Nisba and... Um, the Erie County Association of School Boards is pretty slow this summer, so I don't really have a whole lot to report. But I did want to ask if Mike or Pat, did you guys happen to go to the convening of the leadership meeting? Are you going to talk about that? Because I want to talk. I, I didn't know if you guys were able to go. Bill or Bill? No? But we do all get the information that you get on that meeting, so... I hate for you to duplicate information. Are you doing it for the people in the community? Or no, I, I, I didn't get any info. I'm asking if you went because I wanted to know what happened. <laughs> it, it was only for presidents, vice presidents, and superintendents. It was 824. I was out of town. You didn't go yeah, either? No, I was out of town. Oh, I, oh, you guys could have. All right, I was just, I would have went, I would have went um, if, you, I didn't know that you guys did, couldn't go. I would have went to it. Um, I was just wondering what happened. It was that speaker was pretty good. I wanted to see what if you guys 
we're able to hear it. Um, That's it. I think that's all I have, actually. For board reports, that's all I have. Anyone else have anything they'd like to report on? Just very simply, I'd like to say I've been driving through the campus every day for uh, the last couple weeks, uh, dropping my daughter off at volleyball, but seeing a lot of activity that uh, is aligned with returning to school. All the teams are out and practicing. We've had some nice weather as of late. And then most importantly, the construction is moving along. Uh, and we're having our normal hiccups, but progress continues to be made. Um, as all of you know, one capital project finished and then we started another, continually improving the district and the school grounds. Uh, Dr. Valley and I have been in regular contact regarding enrollment numbers and uh, the spikes here and there. Nothing out of the ordinary. Everything is um, going according to plan and we look forward to another great start to the school year. It seems as though we were just here last year and I was complaining about emptying the dishwasher. Um, and wanting to return to school, but um, uh, I always like to return to the structure, and when I see children who are going back to school, I ask them, are you ready for school? And they're always giving me a face, but it's all where all their friends are and all the activity is, and I look forward to the fall sports season, um, as well as all the activities uh, aligned with uh, the return to school and then open houses, and so activity is bustling, and um, we're looking forward to another great school year. 9.0, Superintendent's Administrative Report, Dr. Valley. I had four things, I'm down to two. Uh, construction was mentioned and we will be, uh, we are firing all cylinders and will be open uh, for school. Uh, we have zero problems at this point. Uh, it won't be pristine, but we will be open and good. Uh, we were most concerned about Hillview, obviously. Uh, there are people driving by and saying, oh boy, you know, this isn't gonna be open, but we were assured that it will be and it will be. Um, so there's a, a schedule of teachers getting into the classrooms and construction leaving and uh, support staff uh, going in and cleaning and that's in, in progress and in play. And uh, we're really happy and appreciative of uh, Joe Armini and everyone involved in that doing a great job. Today was new teacher orientation where 32 new teachers uh, joined our faculty and that was exciting. It was, uh, I had opening comments this morning, uh, first thing in the morning and then I uh, cooked hot dogs. Um, and uh, shared some time with people uh, eating lunch. That was nice to do, and I think it went very well. Thank you to uh, Dr. Perini and Kufel and uh, um, Michelle Ziegler and, and Karen Marchioli, and if I'm forgetting anyone, I apologize, Sandy Camerata and John Armstrong and everyone putting that together did a great job, and it's, uh, it was a nice day, and tomorrow will be day two. Uh, we will go on a bus tour uh, first thing in the morning, and they will continue uh, some of their activities in the afternoon. Um, and then um, Wednesday and Thursday, faculty and staff re return, and we look forward to everyone coming back and uh, uh, dusting off their books and their pencils and their desks and getting back to work. So uh, we expect a good opening to school, and uh, we'll report on the opening and how everything went at our next board meeting. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Dr. Valley. Moving on to old business, 10.0. Does anyone from the board have any old business they'd like to bring up? I do. At the last meeting, we um, tabled our old business because we had a couple of board members missing. So this is very old business now because of that. But I wanted to discuss um, our board policy uh, I got the number here for you. I believe it's 1320. And it is the way I, I want to, I'm not exactly sure how we go about it. I know we're not gonna do it tonight, but I think it needs to be put on the books. 1320 it is. And it is how we go about electing the officers of this board. Um, I sent an email to the board on July 14th. I believe you all received it. And if you didn't, I have copies for you. Um, you could take one of these and pass them down. So currently when we um, look to to have board 
members become officers of the board, we basically willy-nilly it. It's, it, it. It parallels that of a eighth grade class president. It, it has no uh, substance to it. It lacks transparency completely. You come in and it's, you, you have no idea. So I think it needs to be revamped and have some greater meaning behind it. Um, to bring to your attention, the night of the that process, it brought, was came, brought to my attention that Kelly was going to nominate myself for vice president and wasn't able to be here. And because she wasn't here, that nomination happened. Now that's not gonna suggest that it's going to change the outcome of the election. I'm not foolish enough to think that. But because of that, that nomination wasn't even put on the table, which, which violates um, not a policy per se, because there is no policy for that, but you cannot withhold that information. Um, had that been done prior, we wouldn't have had this problem. So had there been better language written in this policy, we wouldn't have this issue. I don't know how we go about changing the wording of this, but if you look at 1320, which is which is on in that packet for you, um, you can see there there is there's no clear rules on how we go about. We just nominate somebody. I pick whoever. Um, it's very it's, there's no professionalism in this whatsoever. So. Um, just to be clear, um, what do you think should have happened, Mr. Christopher? Well, when Kelly couldn't make it and asked you to read, to nominate for, on her behalf, and you said we don't do it by proxy, um, that was, you, you took it upon yourself to withhold that information from the rest of the board, which then only your nomination was put on the table. So, so are you saying a position should be put in place whereas people are made to advocate for others in their absence? No. So what I'm saying is, if for example, Mr. Sage was, is the one who nominated you. If Mr. Sage wasn't able to make the meeting, he would have then called Mr. Gallagher and said, I'm not able to make the meeting. Could you nominate Pat for me because I'm not going to be able to be there? He would have done so. That's exactly what Kelly okay. did. But I, I'll put it to you that that's not exactly what happened. Um, the responsibility of board, uh, of the board president, of those at the meeting, is to make sure all that information um, is available to participants in the board. Right. Um, and by information, I mean that they, all the board members present, need to know that they can nominate whomever they'd like. Um, and I think you won't disagree with me that everyone understood that. They can nominate whomever they'd like. They can nominate Mrs. Matz, myself, you, Mrs. Dechinsky. Do you agree with that? Yes. That they knew that. Okay, so that's all they need to know. Um, the fact that Mrs. Dipchinsky was not going to be here and wanted me to speak on her behalf. Um, I'm a board member, and I have one say. And the scenario that you brought up where Mr. Sage would call Mr. Gallagher or vice versa, the trust would have to be there, and the agreement in the advocacy would have to be there. So you brought those two up because they have a very good professional relationship. I'm sure they trust and respect one another. Um, so therefore they may be able to persuade one another to agree with that nomination and the reasoning behind it. Um, what was lacking in Mrs. Dubchinsky informing me via text you know, an hour before that she wanted to nominate you, um, I was already nominating Mr. Gallagher um, and for the reasons that I do trust and respect him. Um, so it is not my responsibility to advocate on her behalf or to speak her words if she's not here. Um, granted, she was excused from the meeting um, but that does not give anyone on this board the right to dictate to another member of the board to do their bidding and speak on their behalf. It would be the same thing as if I wanted to propose a resolution and I looked at my calendar, I wasn't gonna be here. I would have to go to Mr. Gallagher or Mr. Sage or anyone on the board and I would have to convince them through my reasoning and logic that I have a good, good idea and then they could do that. They would say, okay, I'll take that upon myself. Absent that, trust, respect, and agreement in logic and reasoning, 
No one on this board is responsible for doing anything. Okay, but that, that being said. said, though, as your duty as board president, it's different. So if you look in the packet that I gave you, and if you look to... Can you speak you to a look, specific? Sure, I'm flipping the page. This, by the way, was in the, um, all this information could be found in the new member orientation manual that was applied to us from the superintendent's office. So if you look on, the exhibit one, where it says exhibit one at the top, on the right hand side it says who preside who presides at the president president debates. It says because it gives one side an unfair advantage if the preceding officer actively advocates his position, presiding officer should designate another board member to assume the presiding role if the chairman chooses to become actively engaged in debate. So you can take a look at this, but the bottom line is this, Pat. When you decided that you were going to withhold that information and only put your nomination up, you you violated. Oh, I disagree with you entirely. I, um, I know you're, you're going to disagree. Of course, you're with me taking entirely. this out of context, and you're no, applying, no, I'm not, you're, you're applying I your own definition. Because I'm the attorney at NISBA Again, Mrs. As Christopher, well, and he's um, the one who directed me. Okay, well, so, I, I I followed up with people at NISBA as well, and, um, and who did the logic up? is um, I asked up? Mrs. Janik to contact one of the attorneys from NISBA. Mm -hmm. Um, so and then you to, didn't speak to him, right? You didn't. Who did, you didn't speak to him. <laughs> Regardless, see, this is neither here nor there. We're talking about NISBA policy and interpretation of a policy, and yours differs from mine. Um, this refers to, uh, you know, active engagement where I am trying to put down a logic of reasoning and using my authority. I'm not doing that, right? Um, in response to your request, I had told you could you could you ask me for your support as vice president as well, and I told you I'm I'm supporting Mr. Gallagher, right? right? Okay, so. The point more is about advocacy rather than sharing of information and really of taking sides. Not your Mrs. Mrs. Okay, Mrs. Christopher, rather than looking at our, uh, the, the context and the definition of, of our policy specifically, you mentioned that you weren't foolish enough to think that the outcome would have become different. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, so perhaps it's incumbent upon you to form relationships with board members and earn trust and respect and perhaps they will it's, look. It's they will then that. look at you within that. a different light, and perhaps promote you to the leadership position that you not, you desire. It's not about that. Okay. We well, know, if it's you not, you know that, and I know that as well. Pat, okay. That it's very okay. much, it's very much a divided board that's going to stick together the way it has been. I've proven myself the past two years. Okay. Every single meeting. To whom though? Again, we're, this a, we're okay, but let we're me, a seven-member board, my thought. and each person has their thought. say, Mrs. Christopher. Let me finish my thought. Okay as well as the option of that that she could have called you she also has the option to call in her her nomination that was never given to her oh no we would all there's there's other parameters regarding uh, a board member um, uh, attending via skype you would have to post that your location would have to be made available Not and people this, people would have to be it's right uh, in the manual that we were given right here if you flip the page, it's highlighted for you, 3.7. Can a school board member vote via telephone conference? It says a school board member may properly conduct a meet, conduct a meeting and vote on public matters. Of course, the and there's other conference. parameters surrounding this that would make it but necessary for the public. The pu um, Mrs. Dachinsky texted me one hour. It I was, was already here. Meeting. I was, it was already an emergency here. Situation. Let me just let me just say okay, something. Since option, we're talking like I'm not option. here, I can speak for myself. Go First right of all, out. I wasn't dictating you, Pat. I had an emergency beyond my control. My basement flooded, and it wasn't so much that my basement flooded. Down to the last hour was that I was bailing water, a sweaty mess, couldn't take a shower in my own home. Okay, but the circumstances Listen, are unnecessary. Please stop interrupting. Too. Okay. <laughs> sure. Here's the thing, it might have been an hour before the meeting, you didn't text me back until 10 minutes before the meeting, and you said we don't do things by proxy, which and is kind don't. of, which is kind of, you know, the same thing you did was taking it upon yourself. All I asked you to do was please read my statement. I wasn't trying to vote, I knew I couldn't do that, but clearly I was wrong, because here says I could. Now if you knew this, why didn't you offer it to me? That's all I'm saying. 
I didn't even know, but you could have said as the board president, being on the board, you know, for double the time that I have, you could have said there are other ways you can still do this. You could call in or whatever the case is. I wasn't dictating But you can't do that. You. There are not other ways at that I juncture. I mean, an hour before, that's something sure. that was out an of my control. Okay, and, and I, I understand that. And you were, and you were excused from the meeting for that Correct. day. But that does not mean that people have to do your bidding when you're not here. You're excused from the meeting. You wanted to advocate for Mrs. Christopher. You, can you asked me to do that. Mrs. Dipchinski, well, it goes back to a, a trusting relationship. Do you and I, so have you earned my trust or respect? Time, you won't read it because that, we're not best friends? But if, you come, if you come to me and ask me to advocate for Mrs. Christopher on your behalf, and I don't agree with we that advocacy. She's not asking you to advocate. She's asking you to just say. Okay, well, we have a difference of to, opinion to in terms of the board. interpretation Listen, of the information. Mrs. Dipchinski can't be here tonight. But this was her intention. I want you to know her intention. This is my intention as Pat Utag. This is who I'm going to nominate. But Mrs. Dipchinski reached out to me because of emergency situation. This is her intention. That's all she asked you to do. Okay, but She's not asking you to, I didn't to, ask her. to, to support well, me from here. Perhaps, perhaps having this expectant nature where you expect me to do things. Um, as board president, yeah, we do expect that. Right, okay, so what, well, so what it boiled down to okay, is you Mrs. took Christopher your nomination and, Mrs. and put it out this there This is not to productive. And you took the other there is no breaking of the rules that's happened here. Table. This is more so to do with conflict that has nothing to do with the Lancaster School District. No, it absolutely Dr. Dr. we do like to elaborate on the law. It's and not being transparent. Okay, it is that's your opinion. It's not being transparent. That's your opinion. No, it's not. It's plain as a nose on your face. You, you had a nomination out there that the others, the other board members did not know what could have been on the table because you did not, you chose not to share that information. Is, is, is there a reason you didn't advocate for yourself? You I cannot nominate myself. But you could ask people to nominate you, right? I can, I can ask people to nominate And why didn't you do that? Isn't it incumbent upon you to advocate for yourself as I well? can ask, I can ask someone to nominate. Sure you can. You could have done it before the meeting. You could have done it during the meeting. Of course I, you can. I didn't even know she was going to do it that night. I did. We talked about it a month before, and when I asked for your support and you did, and you did that via text message, which is included in this packet of information, I I was just going to ditch the whole thing. It wasn't until after the meeting that I found out. So wouldn't it, so wouldn't I, it have been a good idea remember, to call other board members? If you members? also remember, I had a raging fever that night. Do you remember that? I do not. So I had no idea she was even going to nominate me until the meeting was over. And this is... But you could have contacted other board members as well prior to that. So I didn't have to help me, right? But so you stopped there. So if I don't do what well, you want, I then we didn't know you did it twice. Oh, Mr. Sage. Oh, Mr. Gallagher. Oh, but we didn't know you didn't do it until the meeting was over. I didn't even know about this. Again, Mrs. Christopher, you, you have plenty of opportunity to advocate for yourself. You have plenty of opportunity to. Just not going to admit you're wrong. Just own it. Not, just own it. Okay, we're going to move you on. Information. We're going to move on to other business. Okay. Does anyone else have any other old business? Well, the rest of the board members, you have all the information. Just review it for yourself. It's black and white text messages, emails, and Thank you, Mrs. Christopher. The, results, the re results were that I am, again, the board president. Mr. Sage is the vice president. Um, and, you know, this is your last year of a three-year term. Perhaps it would be, you know, best spent um, building the rapport and the credibility uh, of Mr. Sa uh, Mr. Gallagher and myself. And I think, um, again, you know, you like to pose questions to us as to, did you go to this meeting? Did you go to that meeting? And you also tell us all the meetings you've gone to. Um, please don't make the mistake of mistaking activity well, for achievement or for credibility. That's what you do. Um, so, I wanted to do okay, that so thing because that, I wanted But that to does know not happened. earn you the credibility to demand so that you have a leadership role. So what does? That's, Over the last two years, I'm just saying for her, like, that's a ridiculous statement to make. Pat, Pat, okay, I asked you if you went thank, to that meeting this you. evening because 11. I truly wanted to know thank what happened at that meeting. 11.0 new business. 11.1 personnel items. 11.1.1. Could I have a motion to accept the personnel changes as written? So moved. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Those opposed? So moved. 11.2 education items. 11.2.1. Could I have a motion to accept the committee on special education's report? Um, Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 11.2.2, could I have a motion to accept the Committee on Preschool Special Education Report? So moved. Aye. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.0, business and financial items. 12.1, could I have a motion to accept the financial items as written? So moved. 
Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Those opposed? So moved. 12.2, uh, surplus textbooks. Can I have a motion to accept that report? Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Those opposed? So moved. 12.3, the surplus equipment report. We continue to make tremendous strides in getting rid of old equipment and selling it to the highest bidder as well. So that was some good news. Any questions on that report? Or could I have a motion to accept that report? Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Those opposed? So moved. 12.4, surplus buses. Could I have a motion to accept that inventory? Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Those opposed? So moved. 12.5, could I have a motion to accept the contract for the UPK agreement with Carousel Nursery School? Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Those opposed? So moved. 12.6, could I have a motion to accept the contract with People Home Health Care Services? So. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Those opposed? So moved. 12.7, could I have a motion to accept the contract between the district and the town of Lancaster? Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Those opposed? So moved. 12.8, could I have a motion to accept the contract with Deaf Access Services? Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Those opposed? So moved. 12.9, could I have a motion to accept the contract with the District and Service Bridges Incorporated? Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.10, could I have a motion to accept a contract with International Institute of Buffalo? Aye. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. Could I, 12.11, could I have a motion to accept a contract be, uh, between the district and Canisius College Institute for Autism Research? Aye. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Those opposed, so moved. 12.12 is a bid award for phase uh, 6C. Could I have a motion to accept the award? Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Those opposed, so moved. 12.13, could I have a motion to accept the bid award for printing? Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Those opposed, so moved. 12.14, a contract with Nictor Construction and Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.15 is a bond issue change order. Could I have a motion to accept that? So moved. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.16 is a partial payment real property taxes report. Could I have a motion to accept that? So moved. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.17, an indemnification resolution. Could I have a motion to accept that resolution? So. Any second? Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. And then 12.18, we have a reserve uh, work session date. Do we have that date, Dr. Ballard? Uh, yes. 23rd at 6 p.m. Everyone, please check your calendars. That's for information only, and we'll approve that at a future meeting. We nail it, yeah. Can we nail it down this evening? Can everyone check their calendars the 23rd? I know that I am available. Is anyone not able to nail down that date for tonight? 23rd. Okay, we're good. Okay, 13.0 public hearing. 
Welcome to all who have come to observe this meeting this evening. This is a time set aside for public hearing, a time when we invite members of our community to share ideas and concerns with us. We welcome this opportunity to hear from you. Each person is given up to five minutes in which to address the board. This is a meeting held in public rather than a public meeting, which means we will not be engaging in a dialogue with members of the community this evening. Rest assured we are listening carefully and we take seriously what you have to say. I would like to ask you to demonstrate respect for us and for one another by speaking to the issues, giving us ideas, and sharing your opinions, but not engaging in any personal attack. This policy will be strictly enforced, and anyone violating the policy will be barred from addressing the board in the future. Thank you for your cooperation. Um, the only one signed up tonight is Mrs. Wendy Picknell. Mrs. Picknell. Can you hear me? I wasn't going to come because I had um, talked to a few people today. This is regarding the um, senior parking. And I felt good after talking to people, but Mr. Utag, after hearing your comments today, I'm glad I came. I, I don't believe that the, it's a privilege for these kids to work. And my son has an internship. He's involved in Honor Society where he volunteers his time after school. He needs it. I work now, I have a different job. For three years I've taken him up to school, picked him up, taken him and his friends to hockey to get to, to Pew Rink at three o'clock. It's not a privilege. I want my kid to be involved with things. If he's not, I don't know what he's gonna be doing. There, there's so many things that these kids are dealing with nowadays. And for you to say it's a privilege, I, I don't understand that. I, I've exhausted, everything uh, he's 25 of 29 kids that I mean even if you find 10 parking spots I still have 15 more I, I just I, I know everybody's trying to do what they can but after hearing your comments it, it just aggravates me that that this is it, it's not my kids a, a great kid he's done he's tomorrow he's going to help out with orientation he's doing beach cleanup for honor society he's an AP student and I, I totally disagree. I, I feel bad that it's come to this. I know Mr. Markiolin promised these kids are going to have a good senior year. As far as my son, I, I know it's not the end of the world. There's other things that are going on. It's, it's not the end of the world, but to him, it is. It's a big deal. I've called the church. I haven't heard back from them. I, I will. I'll get concrete. I'll get stone. I don't know. I, I said I would do anything to get these kids something, but I. I haven't been to a board meeting, and I'm, I, after watching what has been going on, things have not changed. People need to get along and work together. I, I don't know how Kelly and Brenda, I couldn't do what they do. I really couldn't. Nobody gets, you still don't get along. I, I have better things to do than, than come and see people just fight and argue here. I mean, it's, it's very disrespectful, and it's, it's a shame to see this. And I, I really wish I wouldn't have come because after talking to Dr. Valley and Mr. Marchioli, I, I really felt good. But after coming here, I, I really don't know. I, this, this is very disappointing for me. And I hope for these other kids they can work things out, but that's all I got to say. Okay, thank you very much. 14.0, future presentations. September 18th, we have career development and occupational studies presentation by Mr. Ar Dr. Mr. Armstrong and Mr. Uh, Candela. October 2nd, we have an audit presentation with Treasurer Malecki, which promises to be a, a lot of fun. 15.0 is executive session. I have a motion to go into executive session to discuss pending litigation, index number 810677 from 2017. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Okay, this will effectively be the end of the public meeting, so unless you'd like to hang around for adjournment, I thank you for coming. And we'll see you at the next board meeting on September 18th, 7 p.m. at the William Street School.